This episode of Eat the Rules is brought to you by You on Fire. You on Fire is the online group coaching program that I run that gives you a step-by-step way of building up your self-worth beyond your appearance. With personalized coaching from me, incredible community support, and lifetime access to the program so that you can get free from body shame and live life on your own terms. Get details on what's included and sign up for the next cycle at summerinandin.com forward slash you on fire. I'd love to have you in that group. This is Eat the Rules, a podcast about body image, self-worth, anti-dieting, and intersectional feminism. I am your host, Summer Inanin, a professionally trained coach specializing in body image, self-worth, and confidence, and the best-selling author of Body Image Remix. If you're ready to break free of societal standards and stop living behind the number on your scale, then you have come to the right place. Welcome to the show. This is episode 221, and I am joined by Danny I'm a Pound Cake Adams. We are announcing our Body Image Coach Certification Program. Woohoo! In this episode, we're talking all about the program that we've created. We're going to talk about what body image coaching is, how we help people and practitioners, the issues with the current state of coaching, what we're going to do differently, and what the Body Image Coach Certification Program is all about. You can find all the links and resources mentioned at summerinandin.com forward slash 221. I want to give a shout out to SJC1974 who left this review. I've followed the body positivity movement for a while now. This podcast is great. I've learned a lot and the guests are always very informative. I love the down to earth, no nonsense approach. Applause emoji times three. Thank you so much for leaving that review. You are the first person who's ever left an emoji in a review. I didn't even realize you could do that. So for those of you listening that don't know what to say in a review, just leave some emojis. That's the easiest thing to do. Just leave a bunch of applause emojis. Leaving a review helps others to find the show. And you can do that by going to iTunes, searching for Eat the Rules, then click ratings and reviews and click to leave a review. You can also help out this show by subscribing to it via iTunes or whatever platform you use to listen to podcasts. If you haven't already done so, grab the free 10 day body confidence makeover at summerinandin.com forward slash freebies with 10 steps to take right now to feel better in your body. This is a really exciting episode. I'm so pumped for you to finally release this information to the world. I will say before I dive into this episode that if you are a practitioner, if you're a coach, if you're a nutritionist, if you're a dietitian, a therapist, a personal trainer, if you work with people who have struggled with with body image in any way, shape or form, you can grab my free body image coaching roadmap for professionals. You can get that by going to summerinandin.com forward slash updates dash coaches. I realize that URL is kind of hard to remember. So I will just put that in the show notes for this episode. You can also just go to my website at the body image coach.com. And you can find under the work with me tab, there's a tab that says for professionals. And then there's a little pop out that comes out that gives you access to that. So if you're not ready to kind of dive into what we're offering today, which is the certification program, you can get my email updates for professionals. It's something I've been sending out for a few years now. And there is a freebie that you get that just gives you a little bit of a better idea of how I work with other professionals and the process I use when I'm working with clients. All right, I'm not going to share anymore because we really cover it. We cover like how we got to know each other, how this program came into fruition and what we're going to be covering in it in this episode. So we're just going to dive right in. Let's get started with the show. Hello, I'm a pound cake. Welcome back to the show. Hi, Summer. (laughs) Today is a really exciting episode. We are here to have a big announcement together. I will sort of let's do that. And then you can do more of an introduction of yourself. Does that sound good? Perfect. So we are here together again. So you were on the podcast last year, you were on episode 195 talking about medical fat phobia. And we since then started kind of working together behind the scenes. I was helping you, I was sort of mentoring you a little bit around body image coaching, you were, you know, mentoring me a little bit around like the the social justice aspect of it. And I at the time was, you know, helping other coaches to learn 
how to incorporate body image into their coaching. But I knew that I wanted to bring someone along in that journey who could offer a lot more expertise in the social justice realm and also who has a very different lived experience than me. And so we are here to announce that we have launched a body image coach certification program together. Yay! Insert applause. (laughs) I'm excited. (laughs) Yes. So we will give more details about that. That's kind of what this episode is about. We're going to just be talking about, you know, what is body image coaching? We're going to be talking about some of the, you know, some of the problematic things that we notice in the coaching realm. And then we'll talk about the program that we've got going on. And before we do that, why don't you just tell everyone just a little bit more about who you are and how you got into this work? Hi, everybody. My name is Danny, also known as I'm a Pound Cake. I'm still struggling with my name, everybody. <laughs> so I am a body image coach, feminist entertainer, just a community, you know, community leader. I do a lot of work in my community. I live in a little small town called Sanford, Florida. I care a lot about the ways that people perceive people in general and just how people are stereotyped um, and ostracized and just left out of opportunities, the ability to thrive economically, physically, right? Like socially, all these different things that our bodies kind of, our, our bodies are judged, right? And beyond measures and it has like actual structural consequences. And I've been having a good time working with you a summer. I don't even know how many months it's been. It's been months. It's been a year. It's been a year? Oh my yeah, God. I think it's been a year. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. So glad you're the time keeper. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think at least, but I'm pretty sure it's been about a year because we started wow. right after you were on the podcast, which was a year ago. Yeah. Wow. Wild. Okay, that's amazing. So it's been a year. Um, so I got actually got into body image coaching because I actually do my fitness coach. Like, you know, it's kind of similar, but I don't know when the exact starting point is, but I know when it sparked my interest, like my fitness coach, she was thin and she was always coming to me after we worked out. Uh, and she wanted to talk to me about her body image issues. And I would be like, girl, I'm just here to work out. You know, like when you are a fat person, people come to you all the time. Just assume that you are a thing. Like you must be people's confidence coach. And I was just kind of like, you don't really got to be confident, you know, like, well, I don't mean that people shouldn't be confident, but like, it's not mandatory, right? It's like, you know, there's real structural things that's impacting your self-esteem. So I don't think that people should be punished. And then just as time went by, I took a few like courses. I knew a lot about social justice. And so I knew I just couldn't leave that out of my work as like a black woman, as a fat woman, as someone who definitely comes from a very much so poor background. And and the way that people talk about food was just alarming to me. And I wanted to do this work. And so you've been mentoring me for the past year. And that's been great being able to help a lot of people. But with a lot of life changes, I want to actually bring my expertise to, you know, more so the curriculum side and help other people help people. And I'm excited about what we've created together. Yeah, I think that's like we share the same vision and that we know that it can make a huge impact if we help other practitioners like dietitians, therapists, nutritionists, intuitive eating counselors, coaches, personal trainers, like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like if they are better equipped to work with clients of all different bodies, of all different backgrounds and be able to support them with, you know, body image struggles that don't involve, you know, putting them on a diet or kind of stumbling over your words and not really knowing like how to respond to someone in a particular situation. I think we both share the vision that like it can have a much better kind of cultural change. Like we can facilitate a much better cultural change if we can help more professionals become really confident and equipped and educated around body image and all the things that influence it and how to help people with it. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I mean, like I've been in therapy for years now and I've had all different types of therapists. My current therapist is actually like a thin Latina woman, but I mean, I've had thin women, fat, you know, women as therapists. I've had art therapy, whatever. And none of them understood like my life as like a fat black person. They had no training. My therapist who was a fat black woman, she understood But she was struggling connecting it to like what she learned from the DSM. Is the DSM in Canada? Um, Yes. I think so. Yeah, Yeah, I think it's pretty 
Yeah. Yeah. She was struggling with connecting it to the DSM. Like, how do I work with her and do this thing? Right. And none of them knew about fat phobia and how like it was impacting me and like how I navigated the world and how I navigated jobs or how it navigated like relationships and even friendships, right? How it directly impacted my work. And I think that therapists definitely need training just because mental health is on the rise. I have actually been almost nine months in free therapy, but that particular piece, I just do not get support on. And so I can't get the support that I need because they don't have the training. I have found myself sending my therapist resources to help me. And, you know, that's not fair. Yes, I've heard that a lot with clients, like they'll come to see me in conjunction with working with a therapist because their therapist doesn't know how to work with people around body image. And I think there's a huge opportunity to, and if they do, they sort of, it's very surface level or they do harm. And in, in you know, for example, encouraging them to go on a diet, which is just horrible <laughs> advice from a therapist. And so, yeah, to your point, I think it's like, it's such a huge opportunity because I feel like if you're working with all genders, especially women, there's always going to be an intersection of body image there for the majority of people, not all people. Some people get away unscathed by diet culture and beauty standards and fat phobia. But I feel for the majority of people, like there's going to be an intersection there. And it's so important to know how to help people in that area. Yeah, especially like as Gen Z, like they're they're born into social media, right? And I don't think social media is bad. I'm also an influencer, so I, I love social media. But the exposure at such a young age to these different like body stigmas, like when I was a kid, it was magazines and I wasn't into magazines, <laughs> you know, like I, I just really wasn't. But now you like you have a phone and you see and there's no context. No one's telling you what's real and fake. You also have television. You have music videos. It's like it's you have your peers at school. Then you have the people around you and your family, right? And it's just everywhere. And so I think that, you know, we do need to incorporate body image coaching into a lot of different curriculums for dietitians. Like, I hope that people take our courses and say, hey, we want this at our institute. You know, it could be pretty amazing. And I, I just think it's just going to be an amazing program for, for even just for for people working with kids, adults, you know, women, disabled folks, queer folks. I'm a body image coach for Bronze and Combo. Um, I usually just do group courses now and it's wow. very needed. And I'm the only one in our area. And so hopefully we, you know, make more people body image coaches also, not just people who are already working in the field, but people who are interested in getting in the field. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love it. So let, why don't we talk a little bit about just like what body image coaching is and isn't? I think that that's, you know, kind of an important question because you we were talking about this the other day. You, you were telling someone that you were a body image coach and they were like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit? Like, how would you describe body image coaching? Yeah, I don't know. I'm such a sociologist. I'm like, I can tell you what it's not first, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what Yeah, it is. that's fine. Well, Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always tell people it's not therapy because for some reason, people think that like body image coach, oh, I never heard of it. You must be like some type of body therapist. And I mean, it's kind of, but not really, right? I like want to say that like, I don't diagnose people, right? People come to me and I'm sure they come to you because they're struggling with their body image. And I find that a lot of people that I work with are is struggling with how to navigate, like being in their body around other people. And I've helped a lot of people manage their conversations, the conversations around their body with, and set boundaries, right? I've helped people set boundaries with partners and family members, right? And just like address the trauma that has come with like just being in a body period and especially living in the Western part of the world, like where our bodies is just like such this big thing. So I've helped a lot of people, mostly, like I said, like with boundaries. I personally think body image coaching should, and like ours does, include a, a talking about the privilege of different bodies. So I think that all body image coaching, if you're a person that is taking on clients, just talk about your own privilege. And I think that helps build like relationships and build rapport with people so they can better, you know, talk about their bodies. So again, like I said, it's not therapy. We don't diagnose people. We don't tell people to go on a diet. It's going to make you happy. 
We don't tell people how to accept their bodies, right? Like, at least I don't. I don't tell people how to accept their bodies or, you know, like if they want to lose weight, I'm not going to say you don't have to, but I want to explore why you want to lose weight, right? Because it could be something else. Or I have a lot of people who have come to me because they want body augmentation. So they want a new butt. They want to do lipo. They want different boobs, right? They want to get their teeth replaced. That is pretty common because I definitely talk to a lot of Gen Z folks, millennials in people of color and those things are, you know, like pretty popular in the culture. But we explore that. I'm not going to tell, you know, I don't tell people they can't do a thing, but we try to figure out why um, and try to give people the tools so they can just live in their body without shame, without hurt. And they may not, may or may not leave confident. I think that forcing people to be confident is making our society worse. (laughs) personally. Yeah, right. Because it's just setting another bar. It's like another, it's another expectation, which I think kind of leads to like what body image coaching is not. It's not about, you know, making someone love their body or like focusing on kind of like individual body part. Like it's not about like, okay, we're going to work on like you loving your cellulite or something like that. Like when I describe it to people, it's really about helping people know who they are, like internally, like knowing their values, knowing their purpose, knowing, you know, what they believe and having a belief system that supports this notion that they're good enough just as they are, you know, that they don't need to change who they are. And we'll go into kind of like the facets of what we teach in the program. But I think you kind of alluded to it there just in terms of like the in a coaching relationship, like the the client has all the autonomy, like, you're not like telling them what to do. It's not like a consultative approach where someone's coming to you. And then you say, Okay, here, you're going to do like this and this and this, like, yes, there's generally follow ups and sort of homework that comes out of a session. But it's co-created within the session. And so much of what we do is really about asking questions and listening and approaching it with curiosity and approaching it with this belief that like the person is already whole and resourceful. And you're really just helping them to, you know, find that within themselves and find that voice within themselves. So and then you add the layer like of, you know, the social justice piece and understanding that like none of their beliefs are their fault, which I think is what if we go to kind of the other thing that we wanted to talk about is just some of the problematic things we see with coaching, I think, is this idea that like someone's mindset is 100% the problem. And it's like, yeah, the the mindset is definitely something we want to work on changing. But the mindset is is the way it is because of our culture, not because of the individual. And the onus isn't on the individual. Like it's not someone's fault. It's not that they're not trying hard enough or that they're broken if they believe the things that they believe. It's because they've learned that. And that's one of my sort of the things that really kind of irks me when I see just, you know, the coaching space or the self-help space in general is just this idea that it's like the person's responsibility and like, oh, if you, you know, if you're not changing your beliefs, then, you know, you're just, you're not trying hard enough or, you know, it's your fault. Like it's, it's just a mindset issue. (laughs) That's kind of the quote that really gets under my skin because it's not true at all. It's, it's a cultural issue and it's not someone's fault. And I think that that's like a really important piece of the puzzle that we want to integrate in the work that we do. Yeah, that's really important. So this last summer, especially during like the height of COVID, I was in a lot of different conversations with physicians. I actually will be next weekend, like talking to a physician for the Body Con Conference. But I was telling them, you have to actually help change the world. Like you just can't be in your office because it's not going to get better for your patients, right? So if you're telling your patients you need to eat a certain thing, whether I agree with that or not, right? That's I don't really understand how you could tell someone like me. Well, now I don't. But six a year ago, I was living in a food desert, right? So you're not actively making sure in, in my zip code where you are, are a physician, making sure that the patients that you see have access to food. And so just going back to like the mindset thing, uh-huh. some things are just like impossible unless we participate in changing the world, right? Like if, you know, I've had people like, I want to change my body so I can get a job. I've had a client who changed their body and they saw a drastic difference, right? And like how people treated them, what income, how their dating experience. Like, I want to honor that that is possibly real, right? But like, also, it shouldn't be, right? And so 
those of us who who are doing this work, right, or who are taking in clients, we have to do more than I think. Like, see people here, like you, what you do, right? You get online and you talk about it, you teach people, right? Like, you check your own privilege and you're constantly learning and, and you're participating and being a global citizen that actually is like changing. I feel like body culture, right, and with body image culture, and I I think that that is you know also a part of our work. The part that I care a lot about, you know, is the social justice piece because it's not, you know, like I can't like unthink of myself as a black person, right? Like I was in a, just, just briefly, really quickly, I won't make a long story, but like, you know, if I just the other day, I was in a car with a friend and we're black, right? And the police were behind us. We didn't get stopped, but just like, what does it feel like to be tense in your body and for a moment? You don't want to be in that body, right? Like what I want to be something else that even though I don't have the ability to change, I mean, maybe I can bleach my skin or whatever, but I don't have the ability to like change. I I can't change my mindset to change that real experience, that real fear, right? Because there's a consequence to that fear. And so when people talk about body neutrality, I think about, do I really have that opportunity? Like really in America, do I have that opportunity? And I don't think so. And, and I don't, you know, whatever, I'm rambling, but I'm just, I think that it's, it's tough. It's hard, the work that we do. And I don't think it's impossible, but I think learning and us caring about what it's like to interact with our clients, but also be global citizens is important. This episode is brought to you by Riverside, the leading podcast and video recording platform. And it's the platform that I use to record this podcast. I used to use Skype, remember them? And then I was interviewed for a podcast using Riverside and I knew I had to make the switch. I love Riverside because it's as easy to use as Zoom, but I can record much higher quality audio and video on their platform. And what's amazing is it doesn't matter where my guest is located. It sounds like they're sitting in the room with me. After recording, I can do so many cool post-production things like download separate audio and video tracks or use the Riverside platform to easily edit the content and create video clips. All those cool video clips that you see on social media all with a few clicks. I'm so glad I made the switch. It's super easy to use. There's a reason why so many creators use Riverside. Check them out and all of the other features they have at riverside.fm. You can create an account and use code ETR to get $10 off your subscription. Get started today by going to riverside.fm to check it out. There is a link in the show notes. And if you use code ETR, you'll get $10 off your subscription. Yeah, no, I love I love what you said there. It's so true. And I think that that's why it's so important to like, that's why I'm so glad that you're a part of this, because like, you are able to speak to things that I could never speak to, and be able to then help other practitioners, you know, understand the the deeper layers of this so that it's not just like something that helps, you know, people who hold a lot of privilege. It's something that, you know, can help like, be you know, like you said, be a global citizen and, and be able to actually, you know, make change in in our culture. Yeah, we could do it. What are some of the other sort of problems or issues that you see kind of, you know, when you think of like body positivity or coaching? Like I know we've sort of talked before about like the whiteness in that space. Like what are some of the things that you've sort of noticed? Yeah, I mean, listen, we're in the West where I, I feel like everything is commodified. And so when things become commodified, like we exploit from people of color, right? And, you know, like we make sure that white people are at the forefront, right? To receive the royalties. And I mean, that's how we keep class stratification. That's how we keep the current beauty standard as it is, right? Like, so when we have people selling lotion, body love lotion, (laughs) and we have law firms using you know, body positivity quotes and, you know, car commercials talking about beauty and confidence to buy a car, you know, like body positivity isn't about really, I mean, it has changed its form, right? Like it constantly, it keeps changing because now it's, it's, it's just part of the money machine. Not, I know I probably sound like an anti-capitalist or something, but I'm not trying to, I'm just saying like, i noticed, i noticed, you know, like everything has been commodified. And so with that being said, I think that like white people are the people that are being chosen to to model. White people are being the chosen to people to speak on beauty issues, right? And I think 
for a lot of reasons, discomfort, also being oblivious, also, you know, privilege and not having to at all, like having the privilege to not say or do or rise people of color up, right? Like white people are like neglecting the fact that like black people, brown people are not like being treated the same based on their skin, which is a body image issue, right? So like I was talking about Breonna Taylor and how I realized like during the time of Breonna Taylor's murder, a lot of body positivity people said nothing, did nothing. And one of the reasons is because like white people, and as a lot of people think of body positivity, it's like a confidence issue, right? But the reality is Breonna Taylor could not live in her body, right? And like that is deep. Trans people having, you know, not being able to live in their bodies and not get killed. Like, to me, that is what I think of when I think of body positivity. Personally, I don't care if, you know, if I'm confident or not. I just care whether or not, like, I can go into the store and not be followed or assumed to be a thief because of the body that I have. Or, you know, people assume that they should be more aggressive with me because I'm larger. And I think that white people are missing the mark to speak up. I think white people are missing the mark to step back and push other folks forward. Like, I think it's amazing, right? That like, obviously we look drastically different, but we we bring different ideas. But this is like, how I would like to see people in the body positivity space working together, like going across the lines and working with black, black folks and brown folks. I think the body image coaching space is very white, right? And the curriculum is very white. It's one of the reasons why I'm never taking any other curriculum, right? Like I'm not white and I don't have white clientele. My, my clientele is black and brown, Gen Z, millennials, right? And queer folks who are also black folks. And so like, it's not going to help me, you know, maybe a little bit, but I'm saying like, it's really not going to help me cater to the folks that I'm working with. And I'm glad that, you know, that we're doing this thing, but I think that there isn't any call outs around it, right? Like even during the time of Black History Month, I'm witnessing like, and I'll I'll close, white people are still talking about confidence, right? And they're not talking about black people. Next month is Latino History Month. Like, are we going to get the same response? And I think that white people in this space have to be better allies. I can have all the confidence I want. People of color can have all the confidence they want. But what? But it's like, structurally, I'm experiencing a thing that I can't change by myself. Yes, 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 yes. So thank you for saying that. And, you know, I think part of it is like not knowing like like feeling like, and I'm not speaking for everybody here at all, like, and even just also speak, I'll speak for myself, right? I think sometimes part of it is like, not feeling like you don't like you're going to mess up, which I know is like, that's very, like, that's very like, white thing to be afraid of then like someone not liking you and getting it wrong. And I think so so one of the things I've really had to learn is that like, you're never going to get it perfect. You're, you know, but you have to like, in order to like, be able to speak on topics and be able to be an ally, you have to be willing to, you know, like, not be perfect. And I think that like, the thing that I love that you're bringing to this um, is going to be able to help other practitioners like be able to like kind of push them to be able to speak on these things and partner with other individuals that have different lived experiences and things like that. And kind of overcome some of the like, maybe the mental crap that might get in the way there. Hopefully, I'm not sounding too white privileged with that. (laughs) No, 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 no. I think that's real. I I think ultimately, right? Like, I think people who do things to care about people, most of the time they want to be better, right? Like, I think so. I learned that through the things that I've done with physicians. Like, in most cases, people assume that I probably am arguing with physicians and I'm not, right? Like, when I talk to them about fat phobia and healthcare, you know, of course, they have, they still, some of them remain fat phobic but a lot of them begin to unpack their beliefs right and like yeah you have a point you have a point actually I've, I've had physicians tell me I helped them save lives because of talking to them about fat phobia where they have may have neglected something before and they didn't after you know we discussed fat phobia and, and went through a course so I think that people who are coming who are going to come do this with the take our course wants to learn. And I think most people do in white, brown, black, fat, skinny, thin, queer, whatever. We have something for everybody like to learn 
what you're bringing, what I'm bringing. I'm also, I'm sure you and I are going to learn from this. So I'm just excited to just be in community with people who, you know, just want to do the same things that we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So why don't we talk about what we're doing then? That's a good segue. So, (laughs) so yeah, so it's the Body Image Coach Certification Program. It's a four month group program led by both of us. Like we, we've kind of split the curriculum here and it's specifically for anti-diet slash fat positive practitioners. So whether you're an RD or a nutritionist or an intuitive eating counselor or a therapist or a coach or a personal trainer, you know, somebody who works with somebody with a body essentially (laughs) to learn tools and frameworks through a social justice lens to be able to, you know, confidently support people around body image and make the changes that we want to see in our culture and really have that like more in-depth understanding of it beyond just kind of the surface level of like that it's just about someone's like perception of their body, you know, to be able to go a lot deeper with, you know, like the history of fat phobia, which you're bringing to it and the intersections of, you know, race and class and beauty standards and everything else. And, and so, yeah, I'm super excited about it. It's a combination of live training and the sections that I teach, we do a lot of demonstrations so that people can see like how the coaching tools get integrated. A lot of the feedback that I've received just from when I've been doing Doing this with other practitioners before is that they felt like they came away with like so many tools to be able to help people, not just theory, but like actually knowing like, okay, if some a client comes to you and they're feeling, you know, judged in a particular situation, or they're experiencing medical fat phobia, then like, they'll know sort of like exactly how to be able to work with clients in a particular situation, without invalidating their feelings without causing any like additional harm and to be able to do that from a perspective that really like empowers the clients to just feel a lot more, you know, competent and the way that they treat themselves. Anything else you want to add to that just in terms of what it is? <laughs> no. Oh, well, there's, uh, we also will be doing some like, what is it called? Like, I'm not lunch and learns. Oh, office hours. Office hours. Sorry. I haven't been to school in a long time. Yes. We'll also have some office hours so people can come and ask us questions about the course bef- the week before. But besides that, everything you said it is correct. Also, people will be able to, you know, kind of build relationships with other people in the course. You'll be classmates for four four months. So you'll be able to also, you know, learn from your peers, which is I know that I have a unique learning style. I like to learn from my teacher. I also like to call my classmate and be like, let's review this together. So I think that's pretty cool about our course. Like people just won't be on Zoom and not be able to communicate with other students in the course. You'll be able to build community also through our curriculum. It's really interactive, actually. That's one of the things I love about it when I've done this before is people also offering their own like lived experiences, like if, and their own kind of just like perceptions of situations. Like, I mean, that's the beauty of coaching. I think that's why I love coaching so much because it's really, it's about going into something without having any assumptions about what somebody believes or thinks. And it's the same thing. Like when we teach this is that, you know, people are going to have kind of different perceptions or different ideas of things and like to collectively be able to, have that like to have that collective where we're able to share all that all of that together it makes for such a richer learning experience and such a great dynamic because you have like a whole host of different people with just whatever different experiences that they've had in their lives that can then offer different yeah just their own perspectives on situations that or different like things that we're talking about each week which is really cool yeah i'm excited we starting on march 31st right Yes, March 31st. So enrollment is open now. There's an application that you just have to fill out to just sort of give us a little bit of information about you and why you want to take the course. Do you want to talk a little bit about like some of the stuff that you're going to be specifically be teaching about, like the bias in coaching and the history of fat phobia and things like that? Do you want to talk briefly about those things? Yeah. So well, I'll start with the history of fat phobia. I think it's really important that we discuss the history of fat phobia because even if you're not fat, you're directly directly impacted by fat phobia, right? And so I talk about how its relationship to anti-blackness, which is is definitely going to help, right? Overall, like we're, if, you know, taking on clients of color, but just like people in general, I'm going to talk about a little bit of that will include like diet culture. And we'll talk a lot about where, where does the BMI even come from? We, we talk about it, but like, really, let, we're going to dig into it. 
you know, it's going to be uncomfortable. That course may be uncomfortable for some people who are new, but it's so necessary. I've done this course so many times with different folks of all backgrounds and everyone leaves loving it. But we're also going to talk about like bias and, and coaching, right? And like, how do you come into a place and work with people who are different than you? Like, as a coach, I work with a lot of folks who are transitioning and uh, transitioning their body into a more agenda that they associate with, right? And I also like, right, I'm not trans. And so I also have to check my own privilege. And I'll, I'll be sharing my own stories, my own discomfort, right? And hopefully that makes other people more comfortable to share their stories. I'll talk about how how do you live with the discomfort and also do your job as a coach, right? Because people are coming to you for support and help. And in that, you know, just leaving with some tools and some resources that can help you along the way when I'm not there and you can't run your scenario by me. I think it's just, it's going to be fun. We're just going to have like a really good time in the class. Probably going to tell a few jokes, crazy stories of my own and, you know, lighten the mood because, you know, I know the history of fat phobia for specifically is kind of tough to think about, right? And its relationship to anti-blackness can get a little bit heavy, but I promise it'll be worth it. Yeah. And, you know, one of the other things that I love that you're bringing to this is just how to support clients who maybe have, you know, different level of, of experience, like different levels of oppression than you and like how to navigate the relationship between, you know, coach and client when there is like a difference in when you hold more privilege or when you don't understand like the lived experience that they've had. I'm really looking forward to that. And also you We're being talking about to... honesty, right? Being honest yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And you helping helping people how to help clients like unlearn some of uh, you know the beliefs that they have about about their bodies and about health and and all of that stuff to be able to help them learn you know like a new belief system around all of that that's going to be a lot more supportive for themselves and, and our culture moving forward you're also doing self-care because you're the pro at that <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yes i love self-care <laughs> I'm excited to actually teach about self-care, to be honest. Like, it's just a way to just really quickly, like, I think, like, self-care has also been commodified. Like, I learned that even though I have my nails done, like, see, I'm missing one. I actually don't like getting my nails done. And this is because I have a, a brand contract, but it's not self-care to me. You know, like, it's not self-care to me at all. What I realized was self-care for me is painting. And, you know, people always give self-care recommendations. Go get a massage. Go get this. And I really had to explore. And I want to teach people how to help people to explore. What is real self-care to you? For me, it's painting and no one gets to contact me when I'm making art. I like that, right? Like, I, some people are like a glass of wine may really help them, but that's kind of what we're shown. Like, maybe for you, it's just really rest. Self-care for me is wherever my cat is. Sometimes it's just like holding her for 10 minutes. It's not anything big. It's not, for me, it's not always about spending money. I learned that I like cooking. And the more and more I talk to people about like, let's get into self-care and find out what you like. People are being honest about how much grooming themselves as a woman, they don't really like it. <laughs> yes. And that was the thing I remember, like when we when we talked about self care together, you described it as something I feel like you were like keeping up with beauty or something like that. You were like beauty routines are not self care. I forget what you said. But I, I remember it like stuck with me. The essence of it stuck with me because I was like, Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, I like having a pedicure, but I don't like going for a pedicure. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I love of having my hair this blonde, but yeah, I hate yeah, yeah. the process of sitting in that chair for two hours or three hours. Yeah, it looks great, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. But yeah, but that's it, right? Like, we have to be able to discern like what actually nourishes and recharges us versus like what's just us like, you know, trying to decorate our body in a way that makes us feel good. And right when your schedule is so busy, right? You tell yourself that's to self care because that's the thing that you're doing for yourself. But like, Really, what does it make you feel like on the inside? Like, what would you really want to do with those two hours? So then you really have to 
you know, just address, adjust your schedule to incorporate real self care into your life because that's a task. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Oh my God. And I know about that, that challenge for sure, having a kid. Oh, yeah. So I'll just speak to some of the stuff that I teach about. You know, we really start off by talking about the difference between coaching and consulting and, and helping you like start to hone the ability to coach and like give a lot of space and just ask an open ended question and really try to go in without an agenda and go away from that sort of like problem solver fixer mindset that a lot of us have. I talk about the things to do up front with clients that I do to set people up for success. So creating a measurement system and creating a vision for them and some of the fundamental changes that really lay the foundation for doing the rest of this work. I talk about the working with the client's inner critic and knowing that the voice of the inner critic is really often just like an echo chamber of the patriarchy and racism and everything else. And, and and helping them to find like an authentic, compassionate voice within them. That's one of my favorite things to do. I think when I work with people, it's one of their favorite kind of takeaways and the tools that we use together. And then we do some more sort of somatic and body work with clients, like really helping helping you to learn how to get clients out of their heads and into their bodies. So embodiment work, processing feelings, like how to be with clients with feelings and how to work with them if they're kind of like overwhelmed by this idea that they have to like be with a client's feelings to get clients to really get to a place where they feel, you know, more comfortable and, and like more neutral with their body. And then we get into some stuff around like overcoming judgments and comparisons and and one of my other favorite pieces is helping clients identify their values, which we did together when I was walking you through some of the content. Everybody loves that one. And so that's one of the things we do. And then just wrapping it all up with how to use everything. There's a lot more to it than that. That was like the Coles. Did, did you ever have Coles notes? I think that was like a Canadian thing from like 30 years ago. So I don't know if you, <laughs> no, <laughs> you called it like Cliff's is. notes. <laughs> But that was like a really abbreviated version. We're going to, we'll link to the full curriculum is laid out on the website, on the webpage for this. And you can find that at uh, bodyimagecoachcertification.com. That will redirect you to the page with all the details. So bodyimagecoachcertification.com. And I don't want to toot our horn here, but, you know, people who have done the worked with me around this before I've said it's like basically one of the best trainings they've ever had. So <laughs> I think like it's just getting so much better with you being a part of it. So oh, I can't even imagine you. what the feedback's going to be now, right? Thank um, you. Because <laughs> it's just like, I think it's just, it's going to be, you know, even more useful, even more comprehensive. And people are not only going to walk away with like a whole roster of tools to be able to help clients, but also to, you know, be a lot more attuned to like their allyship and like the structural issues and, you know, understanding like just a much deeper like social justice perspective of it. And I think that that's what I'm really excited about this time around. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm just excited about it all. Excited about the people that we're going to meet, just ready to hear their stories and just help people help other people. That's just, I don't know, that's the most beautiful part about it for me is <laughs> the curriculum is basically, you know, like, you know, that part is cool, but I'm excited about it. I want you all to come for it, but I'm excited to meet everybody and just build together and hear how it's working for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So usually we have you like implement stuff in between sessions with clients or someone that you're maybe just trying to, you know, learn this stuff with throughout the, the program. And there's always opportunities to get feedback. We spend the beginning of, of each session just sort of debriefing on what's happened between the last session, what they've learned, what questions they have. Like, there's a lot of time and space for that, I think. And that's what's really beautiful about it is that you get that opportunity and you also get the opportunity to get coached. And even, you know, if you're still struggling with particular, I mean, we're all struggling, let's be honest here. No, no one has their shit together. But if you are still, you know, really kind of working through maybe your own beliefs about your body or, you know, self-doubt or self-care or whatever, you get the opportunity to get some support with that through the demonstration process that we do each week. And I think that that is something that's been really awesome to see as well. Like you're kind of working on yourself and learning how to help people. And I think that that combination is is like really, really powerful. Yeah. I went through your course and I was like, ooh, this is helping me as a person and also as a coach. So that's what I like about it. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I I mean, that's like I I mean, I still use the same tools on myself all the time because I just think they're super helpful. So, yeah, so we're running it in the spring starting March 31st. I said applications close March 24th. So, definitely go get your application in and then we'll run it again likely in the fall depending on how this goes. And so if, if for some reason you can't join this time around, then there will definitely be another cohort for you to participate in. We're capping it at 15 people this time just because we want to make sure that there it is more of like an intimate container and people get an opportunity to share and that's i mean do you have anything else you want to add that's pretty much i feel like that's all i wanted to say about it no nope, that's yeah. it Oh, and just I'll just speak quickly to the certification process. So to become like certified, you will just have to complete a quiz after each session. Oh, yes. So you can do this and just not be certified and just take it. And that's fine. Like you don't have to do the quiz or anything like that. But if you want to be able to, you know, like put a badge on your website, put it in your bio, say you've done this, then you'll have to complete the the work that comes after each session, which I think will make it good because it just helps you integrate everything that you're learning. Sounds exciting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up here. Where can people find more of you just personally? Oh, yes. Everybody can find me at I'm a Pound Cake online. My website is I'mapoundcake.com. You also can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, wherever. I'm a Pound Cake, AMA Pound Cake. Love it. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to talk real soon. Yes. <laughs> Everyone can find more at bodyimagecoachcertification.com. And we hope that if you're a practitioner, you'll join us. Or if you know somebody that is, send them the information, spread the word. And thanks so much for listening today. Rock on. All right. Super exciting announcement. I haven't announced something this exciting in a while. So I am pumped about it. And you can learn more by going to bodyimagecoachcertification.com or you can just go to the show notes for this episode, summerinandin.com forward slash 221. Thank you so much for being here today. I've got some really great episodes coming out in the next few weeks that you're going to love because I love them. (laughs) And thank you so much for being here today. I'll talk to you next time. Rock on. I'm Summer Inanin, and I want to thank you for listening today. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Summer Inanin. And if you haven't yet, go to Apple Podcasts, search Eat the Rules, and subscribe, rate, and review this show. I would be so grateful. Until next time, rock on.